let's take a look at standing waves. So standing waves are a separate category from the traveling waves, which we've considered previously. And a good way to start thinking about standing waves is to imagine a string that is between two fixed walls. So the points where the string attaches to the wall, they're going to be called fixed points. The string can't move there. It's stuck to the wall. Now, if you disturb the string, so imagine like plucking it, it's going to oscillate. And it'll oscillate like this. I'll draw an image of it. Every point on the string will oscillate up and down, except on those fixed ends. So it'll vibrate back and forth around the equilibrium position. Now it's also possible to make it vibrate in different ways, um, as long as it's sinusoidal, so if it, as long as it looks like a sine or a cosine. Uh, and in each case, the string stays fixed on each end, but we can also have other fixed points within, between the walls. The locations where the string stays at equilibrium are called nodes. So different vibration patterns will have different numbers of nodes. And then the locations where the oscillation is the greatest are called anti-nodes. And different vibration patterns will have different numbers of anti-nodes. But each of these situations is called a standing wave. And in each situation, there are fixed points at the ends. Now, not all standing waves look like this, but let's start out with standing waves that have two fixed ends. And I'm going to draw progressively more complicated standing waves of this type. And I'm going to say that capital L represents the distance between the fixed ends at either side of the string. So in this situation, in the very first situation with the largest wavelength, well, let's see. The wavelength of that standing wave is twice the length of the string because the only part that's on the string is half of a wavelength. If you wanted a full wavelength, you'd have to extend that string one entire L past its fixed point. So there the wavelength is equal to 2L. Another way to say that is that L is equal to lambda over 2. We can also write down an expression for the frequency, because the frequency we can get because c is equal to f times lambda, so f is equal to c over lambda. So the frequency here is equal to c over 2l. Now this one is called the first harmonic. It's called the fundamental frequency also. And sometimes that fundamental frequency is represented as f0. Let's look at the next one down. So there we have one entire wavelength represented in the wave on that string. So the wavelength is equal to L, or L is equal to the wavelength, and the frequency is equal to C over the wavelength, or C over capital L. In this situation, the frequency is 2 times the fundamental frequency. This is called the second harmonic. Let's move to the next one down. Here, a wavelength is equal to 2 thirds of the length of the string. So L is equal to 3 halves of lambda. And the frequency is equal to, well, let's see, C over uh, 2 thirds L, okay, which is equal to 3 times the fundamental frequency. This is called the third harmonic. Then we can go down to the next one, and you can see the wavelength is 1 half of L, okay. Frequency is equal to 2C over L, so it's 4 times the fundamental frequency. This is the fourth harmonic. You're starting to see the pattern, I hope. The harmonics are named after the multiple of the fundamental frequency. The first one, the fundamental frequency, that's the first harmonic. The second one, it has twice the fundamental frequency, that's the second harmonic. Third one, three times the fundamental frequency, that's the third harmonic, and so on. Okay. The number of the harmonic is how many times greater that frequency is than the first harmonic. So the fifth harmonic frequency would have five times the frequency of the first harmonic. Okay. Well, what happens if one end of the string is not fixed? Okay. In that situation, the not fixed end is called a free boundary. And in that case, the free boundary, instead of it being a node, like it is with the two fixed ends, want that free boundary is going to be an anti-node. 
And this can happen in many different situations, but one common situation is an open organ pipe. So an open organ pipe has one fixed end and then one open end. And let's try to draw that. Standing waves with one fixed end and one free end. All right. So the largest possible wave would look like this. And in this situation, the wavelength, well, the wavelength is four times the length of that pipe or whatever the medium is. So if that's the case, then we can do a little bit of math. And the frequency from that is equal to C over 4L. That's the fundamental frequency for this pipe. Okay, let's go to the next highest one. So remember, we have to have one fixed end and one free end. So the next largest, or next, excuse me, next smallest wave that we can put in there would look like this. There, one wavelength is equal to four-thirds of the length of the pipe. And if we do a little bit of math, we can see that the frequency is equal to three times the fundamental frequency. So here we have the third harmonic. We can go to the next one. There the wavelength is four-fifths L, and the fundamental, or excuse me, the frequency is equal to five times the fundamental frequency, so this is a fifth harmonic. And we can go even to the next one. The wavelength here is four-sevenths L, and the frequency in this pipe is equal to seven times the fundamental frequency, so this is the seventh harmonic. So notice, if we have something with one fixed end and one free end, standing wave with one fixed and one free end, there are no even harmonics permitted. You cannot get even harmonics in this situation, in this situation with a fixed end and a free end. Okay, well then what happens if we have some situation where we have a standing wave with two open ends? The ends are not fixed, the ends are both open. Well, if we do that, let's draw that. Let's draw the longest possible wavelength. Well, here, one wavelength is equal to 2L, so the fundamental frequency here is C over 2L. Okay, let's go to the next smaller wavelength possible. Do a little bit of math. Here, the frequency is equal to twice the fundamental frequency. So that's the second harmonic. And we go further down this one. Wavelength is equal to two-thirds L. Frequency is equal to three times the fundamental frequency. This is the third harmonic. We draw the next one. Okay, wavelength is equal to one-half L. Frequency is equal to four times the fundamental frequency, so this is the fourth harmonic. If you notice, these are very similar to the situation with two fixed ends. Two open ends have the same frequencies as the two fixed ends. Interesting. All right, let's take a look at the differences between traveling waves and standing waves. So one big difference is that in traveling waves, there's a transfer of energy. There's a transfer of energy in the direction of wave motion. In standing waves, no energy is transferred and it stays within the medium. Okay, in a traveling wave, all parts of the medium oscillate with the same amplitude, but are not in phase with the adjacent medium. Okay, in a standing wave, different parts of the medium have different amplitudes of oscillation, but all parts of the medium are in phase with the other parts of the medium. In a traveling wave, the shape of the wave moves, so that sinusoidal wave shifts over time either to the left or the right or up or down. In a standing wave, the shape of the wave stays the same, but it stretches and flips. It doesn't move left or right or up or down. It stretches and flips. In a traveling wave, the wavelength is the shortest distance between two particles that are in phase. And in a standing wave, the wavelength is the distance between adjacent nodes times two look back and see that that's true. In a traveling wave, the frequency is the same for all particles, and in a standing wave, the frequency is also the same for all particles, except for at the nodes where there is no frequency because the material does not oscillate. 